Have you ever found yourself tangled up in complex error handling in Rust, wishing there was a simpler and yet more powerful way? What if I told you that a single operator can not only shrink your error handling code by three lines, but also make your error handling more cleaner and more intuitive? Yes, I'm talking about the powerful yet overlooked question mark operator. If you're new here, my name is Flo, I'm a professional software engineer and on this channel we do everything related to the world of software engineering. So let's go and talk about about this operator in Rust. So we're currently looking here at some code that we've already written in a separate video all about file handling in Rust. So feel free to check out this video first. As you can see, we got a lot of unwraps in this code. And obviously this is bad practice because it basically just ignores all the error that might occur while executing this program. And before diving into this question mark operator, let's quickly look at some easy example of how we can enhance this error handling here without the question mark operator. Because in the end, you really need to understand why this operator exists and what it actually simplifies. So obviously we want to get rid of all the unwraps in our logic here. So let's do this quickly. And obviously we get a lot of errors because we do not handle all the errors. So let's quickly fix this. So as you can see, all the common functions we use here like open or read to string actually return a IO result. Now this result generic type basically determines if it's success or failure. And the first parameter of this generic basically is the success type and the second parameter is the failure type. So let's quickly use this type in our return type of our read file contents function. So for that we simply use the result here and in here we obviously want to return the contents of the file so the success of the result is a string and the possible failure will be just a simple error. And obviously we need to import this error from our standard input output library from Rust. Now we do this here because we want to propagate the error to our parent function wherever we use this function. And that's why we basically say that we just propagate this error through using this result here. Now, like I said before, file and therefore the open function returns a result and we need to handle this result. And as we can see, the type of our mutable variable file is basically a result. And we can handle this error by using some sort of pattern matching using the match keyword in Rust. So let's quickly do that. Let's remove the mutability of our file variable and let's rename this to file result. And let's just create a new mutable file variable. And here we use the match pattern matching. And then we just say file result. And this pattern matching basically matches now the type that file result actually returns. So it can either return an okay, which basically means that we have some sort of success in our result. Here we obviously get the file back and therefore we can return the file. Or obviously the result can throw an error. And if it returns an error, we just propagate this error to our parent function. And that's basically it. We've now used our first pattern matching match. Now what this does is, like I said before, if we have a success, it just returns the file and our mutable file variable is now the correct file. However, if it returns an error, so if the result of our opening logic returns an error, it returns this error and propagates the error to our parent function. So after that, we just create a new string called contents where we want to store the contents. And like I told you before, read to string also returns a result. So we now do the same thing what we did above with our file with our read to string function. So for that, for now, we just say match and then use this function directly. And in this pattern matching, we again say okay, and then we also return an error if there is a possible error. Now let's quickly jump to our main function because there we also need to handle this result somehow because now we propagate this error to our main function and the main function has to take care of this specific result. So for that, we can again use just our pattern match. And here we again just return the contents and save it in our contents variable and then just print it to our console. Or we have an error and we basically print the error and then just return. Now if you run this project, obviously we get an error that no such file or directory exists because obviously there is no file that is called output.txt. So let's just quickly create a temporary file. And then if we've created this file, we can again say cargo run, and then we can see the file contents. 
So it basically works as expected. However, you see a lot of downsides using this approach here, because we repeat ourselves a lot and it's just really ugly code. And that's where the question mark operator comes in really handy. So the question mark operator really detects this error through for instance returning them directly to the function. However, if the operation was successful, basically the question mark operator unwraps the value and continues the execution. Now, the logic is pretty similar like we actually coded with our match pattern. And it's basically the same thing just a really shorter way. So let's quickly refactor this really ugly repetitive code to our new code using the question mark operator. So let's just start with our read file contents function. And in this function, we can obviously replace this pattern matching with our match keyword here. And we can basically quickly remove these three lines and then just use the question mark operator here. Now obviously file does not exist anymore so let's quickly rename file result to file again and make it mutable. And now we have the same result but in a much shorter way. So let's quickly do this with our read to string function as well. So here we just remove the match keyword, remove these three lines and then use the question mark operator and then we return the contents variable. Now obviously because this is a result this contents variable has to be wrapped with a OK, which basically means for the result that this is a success and not a failure. So instead of using contents directly, we can just use OK and return it this way. And the beautiful part about this is that we basically can make use of the question mark operator also in our main function. So for that, we can just return another result here. And now we say these round brackets, which basically means void or kind of nothing in Rust. And then we also say error. And then after that, we can get rid of these pattern matching and just use the question mark operator again. Now in the end, if everything was successful, we again need to return an okay. But in this case, we just return basically nothing. So there was a success, but no specific return value. And that was basically it. Now we've actually made use of the question mark operator. We got rid of the weird and really ugly unwrapping of the error, which is not a common practice at all. And it is really bad practice. And we've also reduced our code with the question mark operator instead of using this pattern matching with the match keyword. So error handling is really important in Rust. It's likewise important to really understand the move keyword in this language. So feel free to check out this video here where I explain in full detail what the move keyword actually is and what it does. Thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day and bye bye.